Another big issue for the BYU men's basketball team uh, has been whether this team's better off without senior guard Rashawn Brodus, who was suspended for uh, some, an incident in January. Since then, they've been pretty hot. So, Darnell, I'm going to ask you, is this team better with or without Brodus? It depends on which Brodus you're talking about. If you're talking about last year's Brodus, made a huge difference in some games with his defense and his quickness. This year he was struggling uh, against San Diego State. The last game he played before he was suspended was his best game of the year. He had 17 points, played very well in the perimeter. But the games before that, very inconsistent. Sometimes didn't score, turned the ball over. The, the struggle between he and, and Austin Ainge for that point guard spot seemed to kind of unnerve the team a little bit. No one really knew what their role was, how many minutes they were going to play. Dave Rose was still kind of searching for that. So I think this team would be better if Sean Brodus was playing the way that he's capable. But I don't think he did this year. So I think at this point, I can argue both, both sides because I can say, you know, Brodus, if he's healthy and playing the way he can, yes, they're better. But the way he was playing, no, I, I think they're definitely, they're a better team without him right now. There had always been some quiet speculation with Sean. He's a good kid, but they kind of wondered, well, can he survive the honor code deal? And, he, and I'm not either. I'm not, I was never the best student in school, and he wasn't either. And you kind of wonder, well, can they rely on him week in, week out? And you kind of wonder, you thought after the uh, San Diego State game, man, this guy's rolling now. He's back in great shape. And then a day after that, he's willing to throw it all away. So it became a trust issue at that point with keeping him on the team. Now with Austin and Ben, Murdoch comes in, and he, he's not the greatest player, but he's a steady defensive player. He can give you your 11 to 15 minutes of decent uh, backup play and where they're helpful with that is now those two guys are along the same ability mode. With Sean you were able to change philosophies on what you were going to do and the team was in constant flux with how they'd play. Now they've got one philosophy they can go along with both guys the same basic way. And the, the place where they're missing Sean the most though is on the perimeter defense because Austin Ainge has some great skills. He's a terrific three-point shooter, a great playmaker, an excellent passer, but on the defensive side, he can be taken advantage of by some of these quick guards in, in the Mount West Conference, like Week Adams at UNLV and Richie Williams at San Diego State and Brandon Ewing at Wyoming. BYU doesn't have a guard like that um, in their lineup. So they, they're forced at times to play Lee Kamard on a guy like Brandon Ewing, and that works on the perimeter for deep shots, but if they ever get an isolation set up, Lee just isn't quick enough to stick with some of those guards, and BYU has a, an Achilles heel there that they've been able to hide a little bit in the last you know, seven or eight games they played really well. They've hidden that that problem, but it's something that teams could take advantage of in the, in the uh, future. Something to watch for when they get to tournament play.